because I'm a teacher, I'm going to start with a story, all right? Um, 1981, I'm a, between my sophomore and junior year at Emporia State University, and uh, it's the middle of the summer, and I come in probably with a few beverages under my belt, but I come into my parents' house, and I sit down on my dad's and mom's bed, and I say, Dad, I think... I think I want to be a teacher. You know, I've got classmates down there in Emporia State. I've got teammates down there in Emporia State. I think this is what I could be doing and should be doing. And my dad, in all his wisdom, said, No, you can't make a living doing that. You're going to be poor your whole life. No way. No way. You know, and I don't have any educators in my family. I have no, 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 in any extended family even. So it was, it was advice from a dad who's looking out for his third born son. Of, and he, he, he was probably, uh, had everything in the right mind. I, I, uh, so I put it away. I, I became, I went, finished on, got a degree in accounting, got a graduate degree in business. My first, uh, Part of my career, I was a consultant with one of the big eight accounting firms. That shows you how long ago it was. But I, I went to work for the big eight. I, I traveled the country. I did all kinds of great, uh, had great opportunities in that organization. Uh, left it on my own accord. Got recruited to United Telecom, which later became Sprint. I've always been a finance guy. Um, in about, uh, I don't know, I worked for Sprint, I'd been working for Sprint about 12 years in different positions in finance and accounting, did a little marketing stint, did a few things and used the resources that that company had when I had a chance to uh, attend a meeting at Sprint. So it really was one of those aha moments. But I attended a meeting at Sprint and um, during the course of the meeting, we were trying to determine how to make our group look good, and as you can probably imagine, another group look bad. And there were some discussions that were that went probably into illegal, let alone unethical kind of thing. I remember walking out of that meeting two or three times, going, "I'm not going to be a part of this." And I just and I just it was dry, it was crazy. And I thought I got home that night, and I thought, "All right, this is that that was the thing that pushed me past. I'm I'm going to go th do this." And so. Uh, with the help of a wife who didn't sue me for breach of contract because she knew that it was going to be a big change for our family, I, um, I began this pursuit of, of becoming an educator. Um, and it wasn't easy. If, if I would have, the quickest path for me to be in a classroom would have been for me to teach high school business because uh, it's a shorter path. High school, there, it's more uh, needs more. It's more uh, uh, worried about content as opposed to how the kids learn. And so I could have been in, in, in a high school classroom fairly quickly and taught business. Frankly, I was done with business, and I wanted I didn't want that. And then I thought, if I'm going to take this career and and really do something with it, because I think there's a fifth, a sixth value there that wasn't on that slide, and that's the value to society. I felt like if I'm going to make an impact on the world, which is what I was really thinking was something that was important to me and still is, I, I'm going to go right where people can remember the most. And that is that upper elementary grade, fourth, fifth, sixth. People can remember fourth, fifth, and sixth grade instantly. I bet you're doing it right now. What it looked like, what it smelled like, what who was sitting around me, I can who my teacher was. You can remember that. Now, I had a lot of high school classes and college classes and, and, and so forth, and, and the, their faces and professors and, and names and people, that goes away. But there's something about fifth and sixth grade. And so I said, I'm going to put myself right in the center of that. So I started trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to do that? First, I made a plan. I, I kind of said, okay, is this, is this even realistic? Because financially, uh, is it realistic? Time-wise, is it realistic? So when, once I kind of realized that, okay, I got I to gotta do something here, and that's something I hadn't done as much of, I had to save. I decided I had to make a financial plan and sa start saving my money. And then I started going to school at night. And I went one class at a time. I took, I, I took one class through. I, I was passed over so many times by Ottawa students because they were going through and taking, you know, the regular course load, and I could just take one class at a time. And I, keep in mind, I'm still working seven, 60, 70 hours a week at Sprint. I'm on call 24 hours a day, it seemed like. I told nobody at Sprint that I was doing this for two reasons. One. I didn't want to be on a list somewhere. Oh, Watson's leaving anyway. Let's get rid of him now. And we all know that environment. And second of all, I thought, what if I chicken out? I don't want people bugging me like, what happened to you, man? You, you know. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't tell a soul there. Um, 
you know, the sad part of that during those four years, which would have been the first half of 2000s, I, uh, I had 74 people that I had to lay off over that time period. Um, and, it got, and, and every time the call would come down, gosh, you know, we need six more. Our head count needs to go down by 8% or 12%. Or, every time that call, it just sealed the deal for me. How about how uh, I got to leave? I mean, I, I, this, is not, this is just not where I need to be. What's the impact? Sure, we have shareholders that, you know, we want to impact them. But at the end of the day, if I do this career 25 more years, who cares? Again, I had employees who worked for me, and I loved the employees who worked with me and, and on my teams. I, that was what made me come to work each day, and so I tried to make them have just the absolute best opportunities and, and, and uh, experiences in their jobs. So I cared passionately about them, but again, the impact I'm having on this large entity, this huge organization, just every time I took another class on reading or teaching an elementary kid about math, or every time I took another class about child psychology, I was like, yeah. And then I started dipping my toe in other ways. I'd volunteer at a, at a school. I'd sneak out or do something at my children's school. Or I'd, I'd figure out as I did one of the sneak. Oh, yeah, you'd have to sneak out. Fortunately, I also had a secretary who was pretty good at helping cover my, my, when I was out. But, you know, you dip your toe, maybe coach or something, or do something in, in teach Sunday school or some area like that that absolutely kind of every time I do that, it would be another experience that says, yep, I can do it and I can be good at it. I can, I can actually have this impact I'm talking about. So as I continued working, as I continued doing my classes at night, it, the point was coming where I, you cannot, <coughs> to get, a, to get a, a certification in the state of Kansas, at some point you have to student teach, which means you have to be there for a four or five, you know, four month period. You have to be in the classroom every day for four months. So I came to that point. I was lucky in that I was able to walk away from Sprint and, and on my own terms. I didn't, I, I never did get laid off or fired or anything like that. I was able to walk away on my own terms. Uh, student taught at a school called Westwood View Elementary School, which I'm proud of because it's the right name. But Westwood View uh, is ironically right behind the old Sprint headquarters on Charlotte Parkway. It's literally two blocks away. And, uh, and so I, I started, a uh, student taught there, and um, you know, student teaching, somebody told me this, is like your best job interview because that's the school that's gonna see you the whole time. And of course, they, uh, they had an opening the next year and I was able to move right in. So wow. I've, I student taught there and now I've taught there and this is my sixth year. I've taught sixth grade the entire time. Not a day goes by that I don't think of something to tell or teach or talk to my kids about that is from my, from my, pat, my business oh. life. And I think our kids, my kids, my students get that from me. They get, you know, kind of a, a, a life experience that they may not get from some other teachers. But back to what you said, sir, you know, you have to be, you, I was a nobody. I didn't have a clue. There are teachers who are amazing and have this gift to teach. And my first year in, with these people was so humbling because it's overwhelming and you're trying to just keep up and figure out what you're doing. And uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was pretty humbling. But on the other, and, and 11 and 12 year olds can really humble you. <laughs> so uh, I, I have learned an amazing amount through this journey. I, uh, I love it. One thing too is I kept saying, you know, this is a, this is a flyer, Ryan. This, this may not work out. This may be the dumbest thing you've ever tried to do. This, you know, and again, I had a wife who I guess was willing to let me take that risk. But I also kept thinking, you know, and again, in 2005, when I did this, when I finally cut the cord, you know, times were a lot different five years ago, but I thought, it, nothing's permanent. Okay, I'm going to go try to teach. I'm going to go teach. If it doesn't work out, yeah, I'll be sad, and, and maybe it won't, but it's not, it's not forever. And, uh, uh, I, you know, I did a 20-year business career, 21 years. I can do 20 years of teaching, and it's going to be kind of symmetrical, and, so, and, and I'll feel like it was something that was... Uh, hopefully impactful to our to our world to our society and to our community and um, I just uh, I, I just th I'm thankful every day that I get to do this and spend time with these kids and uh, it's just one class and one group one other thing um, sometimes one opportunity leads to another um, I told you I started my career as a consultant this summer 
a classmate of mine from business school calls me up and he says, hey, I, I have a, my family has this foundation that does economic education in the western Missouri, eastern Kansas. And, you know, we've, we've been doing this 40 years and we've been spending, you know, almost a, almost a million dollars a year on this mission for a number of years. I need to know, am I getting a bang for my buck? So I suddenly took on a consulting role for my summer job. I didn't have to paint or be a swimming pool manager. And so I got to, I got to go back to doing consulting work. I got paid twice the hourly wage that I make as a teacher, albeit just for the summer. But it was a, it was a tremendous experience, again, because, you know, just over the course of a career, you get opportunities, and who knows where they'll extend. 